Hello everyone, I'm uh, Christopher Urban. I'm a dermatology resident at Washington University in St. Louis. But I've, I've only been out there for about one month. For the past five years I've been here in Philadelphia, so I still kind of consider this place home. So as an overview of what I'm going to speak about today, first we're going to talk about what is an infection and how is this related to inflammation. We're going to talk about what uh, microorganisms cause infections and how they do. We'll talk a little bit about the structure of the nail, but um, the other physicians, Dr. Rubin and Dr. Stewart, will go over that a bit. And then I'm going to speak about warning signs, things to look out for, you know, if you're concerned about you may have an infection. And then we'll talk about different types and treatment basics. So, so first off, what, what is an infection? The, the definition of this is the colonization of a host by another organism. Um, there's many different microorganisms that can cause infection, ranging from uh, bacteria to viruses to fungi. And the, the human immune system is what helps defend us from infections. And the immune system's response to an infection can result in inflammation. So what is inflammation? So here's a picture I took during my medicine intern year. And this shows the five cardinal features of inflammation. These include redness, swelling, heat, pain, and you can get loss of function. So the causes of each of these five features are varied. The redness and heat is due to an increased blood flow. Swelling can be caused by an accumulation of fluid in the areas. The pain is stimulated by chemicals that are released and stimulate nerve fibers in the tissue that send messages up to the brain and lead, lead to this, the uh, experience of pain. And the loss of function uh, is caused by a variety of things, um, mainly including the, the pain you experience and that swelling. And now this, this point at the bottom is, is very important. I want to really hammer this home. While an infection can lead to inflammation, not all cases of inflammation are caused by infection. So there's many other things that can lead to inflammation. You can think about mechanical trauma if you have a, a tight pair of shoes and there's a lot of pressure on, on a part of your foot. You know, that can lead to the redness and the pain. And it doesn't always mean you have an infection. But, but now focusing more on infections, what different microorganisms can cause this? So there's bacteria. These are single-celled um, organisms. Uh, the shapes range, as the pictures show, from spheres to rods to even spirals. And uh, they're the, one, the one cell that makes up the bacteria is really capable of performing all the functions of life, from eating to replicating. The next microbe that can cause infections is a virus. And th these are different. These are much smaller than bacteria. And actually, they just contain the basic elements of life. As Dr. Smith talked about earlier with, with genes and DNA, these, these viruses just contain genetic material sort of wrapped in a protein coat. And in, in order for them to replicate and make more viruses, they're actually required to infect a cell of an animal, a plant, or a human, and basically hijack that cell, use the machinery for making more proteins, and then sort of turn the host cell into a virus-making factory. And then the final microbe that can cause infections are fungi. Fungi range from yeast to molds to even mushrooms. Um, fungi are classified as a whole separate kingdom of life, different from animals, plants, and bacteria. And the, the picture at the uh, lower, uh, lower screen there shows a candida fungi, which we'll hear a little bit about later when we talk specifically about nail infections. So how do microbes cause infection? Um, basically, this and also how, how does the immune system in the body protect itself. So the skin and also to some extent the nails acts as a barrier. It fights infection by keeping all the microbes out and protecting the cells on the inside from them. But this doesn't always work. You can have cuts in your skin, breaks in your skin. Um, the microbes can get in through other, other ways, through your mouth or nose. So when that happens, the body's immune system is there to help defend it. Basically the body's immune system uses white blood cells as almost like soldiers to uh, targeting clear out microorganisms. And the two pictures below there um, show something, I, I find them very interesting. They're actually scanning electron microscope pictures, so very, very magnified pictures of white blood cells called macrophages actually engulfing bacteria. As you can see on the one picture, the red rods, and the other picture, the blue filaments, are types of bacteria that are being swallowed up by these macrophages. Once, once the, the bacteria is completely engulfed, the cell can release some chemicals that break down the bacteria. And that's sort of an, an active picture of how the immune system clears, clears out these bugs. But, but despite, all, despite all the ways the immune system can clear microbes, you know, microbes have also sort of developed over time to be able to hide pretty well in our system. And you know, when they are able to sneak in there and hide, 
um, they can quickly multiply and cause damage and destruction to the host tissue. So now we're going to change gears and talk a little bit specifically about nail infections. Um, this, this picture here, uh, the, other, the other positions will show some more neat, detailed um, structure of the nails, but just so we have a, a base idea, the key points on here I want to look at are the, the hard part of the nail that you think of when you think of nail is known as the nail um, plate. It overlies the nail bed. At the, to the right of the screen, the, close, you know, the back part of the nail closest to the hand uh, shows the nail matrix. That's the part of the nail where a new nail grows. And the, the skin that, that lies adjacent to the nail is called the nail fold. Um, on the sides, it's the lateral nail fold. And in the back closest to the hand, it's known as the proximal nail fold. So before we talk about four specific types of nail infection, I just want to discuss general signs of an infection to look out for. These are things you want to have on your radar if you're, if you're worried about, you know, should I or should I not seek the help of a healthcare provider. So the first thing, you know, right at this, for a nail infection, right at the skin near the nail fold, if you have pain, redness, or swelling, you know, those are concerning features. In, in the case of Pachynechia congenita, it, you know, you, there may be a baseline. You may sort of always have a chronic pain or redness or swelling in that area. So the best advice I can say for, you know, if you're concerned about a new onset of an infection is just if, if there's an exacerbation of wor or worsening of the pain, redness, or swelling at that area. Other more concerning features, as we go down this list, we're sort of increasing in severity of the risk, um, is if you have a pus or a fluid collection under the skin, if you have redness or heat in the surrounding soft tissue and skin, if you have streaks of redness sort of traveling down the fingers or hand or arm, and then finally, if you have any systemic signs of infection, things like fevers, chills, or sweats at night. Um, and now we'll talk about four specific types of infection. Um, these range from fungal nail infections of the nail plate to a type called paronychia in an acute and chronic form, and finally to an entity known as lymphangitis. So fungal nail infections of the nail plate have the medical name of onychomycosis and can also be known as tinea. Um, there's, a specific, uh, there's specific dermatophytes that commonly cause these nail infections, one of which being uh, something called trichophyton rubrum. And really the clinical features you look for in this are a discoloration of the nail plate, can be a whitish, yellowish, or brownish color, and also an accumulation of debris under the nail. So, so now you may say in, in Pachynechia congenita, you know, both of these things can occur. There, there's commonly, as our, as our characteristics of nails study showed, there's commonly discoloration in PC nails, and actually yellow and tannish brown were the most common um, colors that the discoloration showed. And then also with, with the uh, hyperkeratinization around the nail, you can also get something that looks like debris under the nail. So if, if you maybe had nails and have something that looks like a little bit of a change, but you're not sure, how would a clinician diagnose this? Well, there's really two ways. The first way is to take, take a blade and scrape off some of that debris around the edge, um, put it onto a microscope slide, put a drop of a chemical called potassium hydroxide on, and just take a look at it under the microscope. And if it, if it shows what the picture um, on the on the side there shows um, if there's fungal hyphae, then right there you've confirmed the diagnosis of a fungal infection of the nail. The other way to do it is to actually take a sample of that debris and take it to the laboratory, plate it out on a petri dish as shown on the lower picture, and see if you can actually grow out a fungus. And the disadvantage of that is it doesn't always, it doesn't always catch it, and also it can take up to weeks for it to grow, but the benefit is you can identify exactly which um, fungi is causing the infection. So in, in terms of treating these fungal nail plate infections, it's, it's actually pretty difficult. There's really two options, topical and oral medications. Topical, or, um, topical medications can include things like anti-athlete's foot creams or antifungal creams you can buy over the counter, things such as Lotrimin and Lamisil. And these, the advantage of these is they're easy to use, they don't have really any side effects, and they can definitely help to re decrease the burden of a fungal infection. The problem is they rarely and usually never uh, lead to a complete cure of a fungal nail infection. Um, there are some oral medications, prescription strength that a doctor can prescribe that have a better chance of leading to a complete cure of the infection, but the disadvantage of these are they can be hard on the liver and also even if you get a complete cure, there's a very high rate of recurrence where you get reinfected. So really for, for controlling the fungal nail infection, it's you know, it can be very beneficial to just use the over-the-counter athlete's foot creams just to control the burden of fungus. <laughs> the next type of nail process I'm going to talk about is 
nail inflammation. And the medical name for this is perinechia. Um, perinechia refers to an inflammatory process of that nail fold that we talked about, the skin that lies adjacent to the nail. And yeah, as, we, as we talked about before, by being an inflammatory process, it may be related to an infection or it may be related to something else, from trauma to, to other causes. Um, really, the risks of this include um, people that have exposure of their hands to wet environments frequently, things like um, uh, bartenders or waitresses, someone who's like washing dishes a lot, just doing chores a lot. These are, these are one risk factor. And another risk factor which relates to Pachinica congenita is just structural differences in the nails can increase the risk of getting the infl inflammation of a paronychia. So, so despite the fact that not all paronychias are caused by infection, we are going to go into two specific kinds of paronychia that in most cases are due to an infection. So the first of these is an acute paronychia. This is a very rapid onset condition. Um, it's commonly caused by an infection with a bacteria, typically a staphylococcus bacteria. And the clinical features are exemplified very well in that picture um, to, the, to, the, to the top there that shows painful, red, swollen nail folds. Again, in, in the case of, of chronic PC, um, it, you may just always have some of those findings, but if there's an exacerbation, a worsening of the pain, a worsening an increase in the redness and an increase in the swelling, that's a time you think about you, know, you may have an infection. Other more concerning features that are shown in the, in the figures below include an abscess or a localized collection of pus and infection or cellulitis, which is an infection of the soft tissue and skin uh, surrounding the initial site, site of infection. So really the best way to the diagnosis, in addition to the clinical findings, is to take a sample. You can, you can grow it out in the petri dish in the laboratory as shown on the last slide for fungus, and that can really help you identify exactly which bacteria may be causing this. Um, the treatment, you know, if it is confirmed to be a bacterial infection, can be, uh, is best with antibiotics. Um, you can start with a broad spectrum antibiotic that would cover, you know, most cases like cover Staphylococcus aureus, but if you grow out the bacteria on the plate, you're able to find out exactly which bug it is and also which antibiotics it's susceptible to. So you may need to narrow your choice and you can choose the perfect antibiotic for each case. And then also if there is something present like that abscess, if there's a, a localized collection of infection, then you would need to drain that to help the body clear the infection quicker. In contrast to the acute paronychia, you can also have a chronic paronychia. This is different because it develops gradually and insidiously, and initially it may even be un, you know, unnoticed. Um, it, it can develop over a period of weeks. And this is commonly a fungal infection, and a very frequent um, culprit in it is actually that candida, that um, fungus that we saw several slides back. So the clinical findings of this include swelling and inflammation, you can get some deformity of the cuticle, which is a little flap of tissue between the uh, proximal nail fold and then the nail, at, at the base of the nail. You can get a, a, another pocket of pus or a localized area of growth of this candida fungus. And then also you can have slight tenderness. It's usually a good bit milder than in the acute paronychia, but it can still be tender. Again, the diagnosis for this is you know, to scrape the area, take a look under the microscope, see if you can confirm that there is a fungus there to treat. And the, the treatment for this is a little bit different. As, as you can see from those pictures, um, you know, th this is commonly a condition that occurs in those people that have you know, chronically wet hands, that they're washing dishes all the time at work, um, doing something where you know, their tissue on the fingers, as shown in the lower image, shows it's very macerated. Um, there's a breakdown of the cuticle. There's, there's just area for the candida fungus to easily penetrate, get under the nail fold, and you know, when it's there, it has a nice moist environment to grow. So really one of the best ways of treating this more chronic condition is just to limit or avoid exposure to wet environments. Now I can't say you know, don't do chores, don't wash the dishes, but little things can really help. Things like you know, wearing rubber gloves if you're gonna have your hands exposed you know, for washing dishes or exposed to wet environments can really make a difference in this condition. There's one final entity I wanna touch on. It's, it represents a more severe infection and it's actually lymphangitis. What, what it is is an inflammation of the lymphatic vessels. And just as a little bit of anatomy here, when the heart pumps blood, it pumps it through the arteries. The arteries take the blood from the heart to distal parts of the body to deliver oxygen. Um, the veins bring, bring the uh, blood back to the heart, but excess fluids can accumulate in the soft tissues. And the lymphatic system is what helps drain that excess fluid back into the circulatory system. So you can actually, when you have an infection, say starting in the nail, you can get an inf a secondary infection of the lymphatic system. It's commonly bacterial, and a bacteria called 
Streptococcus pyogenes is a frequent culprit. Clinical findings of this can include a, a deep reddening of the skin or streaks of red. In the case of a nail infection, it may start as streaks of red going down the finger to the hand, and eventually in a severe case, it could look like the pictures show there of deep streaks on the arm. And this, this is really showing like where the lymphatic vessels are, are tracking deep to the skin. Also, you can get warmth as a symptom, warmth at the site. And finally, this can be a pretty bad infection, so you can get systemic symptoms, things like fevers, chills, sweats at night, this can be, this can be uh, very severe, so it really requires antibiotic treatment, and in some cases even antibiotics not by mouth but through an IV line to really efficaciously clear the culprit bacteria that would cause this. So that's, that's basically it. The, the main points, I know it was a lot of information, the main points I want all of you to take home are, are these two though. So while, while infection can lead to inflammation, um, and the inflammation showing the redness, the pain, uh, the warmth and the swelling, not all cases of inflammation are caused by infection. So it's not that every time you have a warm, swollen nail, it's not always an infection, but so you may say, how, how do I know if it is? When should I be concerned enough to seek help from a healthcare provider? Really, the warning signs that should tip you off include if from baseline, if there's a great exacerbation or increase in the pain, the redness, the swelling of the nail fold, if there's pus or localized fluid collection right under the skin, something known as an abscess, if there's redness and heat of the surrounding skin, um, something known as cellulitis, or if there's streaks of redness extending away from, away from the nail down the finger to the hand to the arm, the lymphangitis, and then finally if you're having systemic symptoms of an infection, things like fevers, chills, or sweats at night, those are really the times that, that I would strongly recommend you to you know, go see your physician, your dermatologist, and to seek help to make sure you can you know, take care of something that could be an infection before you um, have any long-term problems. So thank you so much for your attention. I'm, I had a great time speaking to you all and have enjoyed the lecture so far and I'm looking forward to what comes next.